Well, good morning. This is Pastor Marvin Osborne with First Baptist Church of Birmingham, Ohio, coming to you from my home. This is my den where I do a lot of studying and preparing for the, the Sunday lessons. And um, today we're looking, we're picking up on where we left off yesterday, where we remember when we talked about the book of Galatians, we talked about Paul's rebuke of the Galatian church, how they allowed a different Jesus, a different gospel to come in. And they weren't zealous. They weren't keepers of the faith and that's what all of us are called to be keepers of the faith we need to understand the the absolute importance there's there's a hills that we die on as believers and that is the uh, one of those hills obviously is the is the hill of the deity of jesus christ the absolute essential biblical jesus uh when I say biblical Jesus, I'm talking about the Jesus of the Bible, not this um, uh, uh, glorified hippie that so many people think that Jesus is, you know, wearing the sandals and holding up his peace sign and, and you know, lo he's going to love everybody. No one's going to be judged. No one's, uh, he's not going to send anybody to hell. He's a, he is a, basically a glorified hippie. That's not the Jesus of the Bible. And, uh, you know, Jesus did not condone sin. And so many people want to make that idea of him eating with taxpayers and or tax collectors and, and sinners or the harlots or the, 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 the peripheral people that society seemed to have pushed away as, as him condoning sin. He did not condone sin. You remember the woman at the well who had been married five times and was living with someone else, Jesus told them to go and sin, told her to go and sin no more. And the idea is that Jesus, um, that when they were confronted with holiness, Jesus Christ himself, that they uh, they immediately saw their sinfulness and, and they wanted to change. And Jesus uh, not only encouraged them, but commanded them, to go and sin no more. The importance of Jesus is what we're going to talk about this morning. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. It said, God who at sundry times in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the world. So this, these two passages here uh, really sets Jesus apart from the billions of people who have ever walked this planet. He says, in times past, God used the prophets. And uh, you, you kind of look at maybe the, the, the birth of Christ and the prophets of old, and the prophecies of old were pointing the way towards Jesus. As a matter of fact, it is said that over 300 prophecies were fulfilled in the coming of Jesus Christ. 300 prophecies. And the statisticians would tell us, I mean, the, the insurmountable, the, it's, it's impossible for those to have just happened by happenstance, but it was God ordained. The Bible tells us before the foundation of the world, God knew what he was going to do in order to redeem mankind. It, it, the passage there in Hebrew says that in the last days, he has spoken unto us by his son, Jesus Christ. How important is Jesus to us? Not only is he our redeemer and our savior, the propitiation for our sin, the satisfaction for our sin. He is the uh, the one that you and I must worship and, and give allegiance to. We need to understand who that Jesus is. It's a different Jesus, as I said, that uh, then the Mormons teach and Joseph Smith taught a different Jesus, different than what the Jehovah's Witnesses believe, different than what the Seventh Day Adventists believe in the um, in the Church of Scientology and everything else. We think, uh, if we're not careful, that just as long as people speak about Jesus, that is okay. That they say that they're a believer in Jesus, that's okay. That they're saved. No, 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 no. What 
Jesus are you talking about? Are you talking about the God, the Son, the Son of God who came to die on the cross for our sins? Are you talking about a different Jesus, that hippie type of Jesus, that Jesus, as the Mormons believe, uh, was a man who became God, and just like he became God, you and I can become God of our own planets. That's what the Mormons believe. Now, that's a different Jesus, and, and let me make this very clear that... Uh, that in order to be saved, you must understand who Jesus is and what he's done for us. And so it's important for us. And it says, so in these last days, he has spoken to us through his son, Jesus Christ, who, who, by whom he, also, he, he made the world. So the Bible is very clear here that remember when the, uh, in, in, in the book of Genesis where it talks about uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Well, Hebrews 1, 1 and 2 just told us that it was Jesus who created. We look in Colossians 1, 15 through 17. It says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creation. Uh, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. What's it saying here? In, in Hebrews and in Genesis chapter 1 and Colossians chapter 1, what's he saying here? Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God the Son, created all that is there. And so when Genesis tells us in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. What is he saying? He's saying that Jesus Christ is almighty God. Jesus Christ is the one to be worshipped. Jesus, Jesus Christ, the God of the Bible, is the one you and I should serve. Not this glorified hippie, but the Son of God. God the Son. Something to think about today. Something to praise the Lord about today. This is Pastor Marvin Osborne saying, God loves you, and I love you as well, and I'll talk to you soon.